In today's video, I'm going to talk about an interesting technique to create dynamic tooltips. Let's say something like this. We have a chart. Maybe I want to take a look at the region. If I just hover over my chart right here, I can take a look at the region. But if I want to change the tooltip, I can come back right here and switch that over to a channel. And now I can take a look at all the channels. Interesting. Let's go. All right, people, I'm in Power BI, and that's where I have built a very simple line chart here, and I've also built a custom tooltip on top of that. Please take a look. Once I hover my mouse on top of any particular month right here, I get to see a tooltip that shows me the distribution of the sales across the three channels that we have. Now, if you don't know how to create a custom tooltip like this, I would suggest that you watch a video from Reed Havens, and he has done a brilliant video on customizing tooltips to present anything that you find it interesting in the tooltips rather than just sticking to standard tooltips. Okay, I'm just going to swift through the process of creating custom tooltips, and then we'll just make those tooltips dynamic. So in the new page right here, the first thing that I have done is I have marked this page as a tooltip page. So I just go over without selecting anything. I just go over to the format right here. And if I just go over to the page information right here, you can see that I have used this particular page as a tooltip page. That's part number one. Now, once you mark the page as a tooltip page, I also would like to reduce the size of the page so that it becomes smaller and it just you know, looks like a tooltip. So I'm just going to go over to the canvas settings right here. And I'm going to say that this is going to be the type of a tooltip right here. So you can see that we have different sizes right here. And I've just picked up the tooltip right here. This is going to shrink the entire page and you can then put whatever little charts on the page. Now here is a simple standard bar chart in the bar chart. I have um, the channel coming from my sales table. And here is my total sales measure. Nothing that complicated. Very, very simple. Now what I'd like to do is I would want to switch between the channel and the region based on the slicer and depending upon what I have selected in the slicer that should reflect in my chart right here. As of now, this is static. This is just showing me the channel. I do not really have anything to switch. Now, just a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago or so, Microsoft announced a new feature which was called field parameters and we're going to be using that particular feature to switch between the tooltips. So I'm just going to jump over to the tooltip page right here. And I'm just going to go over to the modeling tab, which is where I have something like a new parameter. And I'll say that I would want to have a fields parameter. Now, I would want to build a slicer that allows me to switch between either the channel or the region. That's what I would want to build. So how do I do that? I just give that slicer a particular name. I'm just going to say in my sales table, I'm going to find both the columns, the region and the channel. I take the region, put that right here. I take the channel and I put that right here. And then I click on create. Now, this also is going to create a slicer on my page that I can pick up from and pick up anything that I would want. Now, this is going to create a table in my data model, which is already created and I'm not going to do it again. So I'm just going to show it to you real quick. If I just click on cancel, go back to the model, you can see that here is a chart access table that I created, which contains the information about that particular fields parameter. All right. So using that particular table, which is nothing but the chart access table, I'm going to create a slicer. So I'm just going to maybe insert a slicer on this particular page and I'm just going to maybe drag the chart axis right here. And you can see that it just shows me the two things that I selected region and the channel. But if I now actually click on either the channel or the region, you can see that nothing really happens to my chart. Why? Because this particular slicer is in no way talking to this particular chart as of now. So how do we make them connect? All that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this particular chart axis and put that in the chart axis right here. Right. So how do I do that? Select the chart, get that particular chart axis uh, in the X axis, sorry, the Y axis right here. I'm just going to cancel that out. This goes in right here. And now because if you take a look right now, we have regions selected. So regions are showing up right here. All good. If I change that to the channel, I get to see the channel. Pretty good. Now, as of now, the slicer cannot be on this particular screen. The slicer needs to be there along with the user when the user is interacting with the line chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this particular um, slicer right here, control X to cut it, go back to that particular page and stick my slicer right here. Pretty good. Now, if I just maybe click over to the region as on how region is selected, if I just hover my mouse on top of this, I get to see the three regions. Pretty good. If I now switch over to the channel, I get to see the channel, which is also pretty good. The problem, however, is that once I switch between the regions and the channels, there is no visual difference that the user would see that 
kind of separates out the two charts as of now this is also the same blue color if i switch over to the region this is again the same blue color it could be misleading that something has changed or hasn't changed in the model so i would want to visually indicate by the color of the chart that you have actually changed the tooltip how do you do that kind of stuff so i'm going to actually write a simple dax calculation and apply it as a conditional formatting and the conditional formatting is going to check what is it going to check it's going to check hey do you have region in the axis or not is the region filtered or not if the region is filtered then apply a certain color if the channel is filtered then apply a certain color so it's actually taking a look at what is there in the axis of the chart how do you write a calculation like that i've already done that i'm going to show it to you so i'm just saying that hey please take a look at what is filtered is the channel filtered or is the region filtered and depending upon that please pick up a certain color that's it now this particular measure is going to go as a conditional formatting in the tooltip chart that we created so i'm just going to hop over back to this particular chart select that go over to the format go over to the bars right here and i'm just going to say hey in the colors just do the conditional formatting use the fx right here i'm going to say this is going to be based on the field value and that is where i'm just going to use my conditional formatting measure okay click on okay and since region is selected it's just showing the orange color if you just go back and uh, take a look right here orange is good if you just select the channel and i'm just gonna maybe come right here it shows the blue color now this is a pretty good visual indication as to what you have selected and it also changes the color that's awesome all right that's been it let me know what do you think about this and if you have any questions around this i'll be glad to reply in the end a big shout about my tax and my power query courses in case you're starting out your journey with Power BI and you'd like to master the fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more difficult, more challenging problems, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking around and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers and bye. Hello people, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about an interesting technique which allows you to create dynamic tooltip. Tooltip, tip, 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 tip